Hey guys and welcome in today's episode where the purpose is to actually see if you should go with building a computer on the AM4 platform and maybe save some bucks that way or maybe you should just go ahead and fork out that extra money and buy yourself this brand new hardware of the AM5 generation that they don't give you any sort of cooling solution for their CPU. Shame on you Ryzen, shame. The purpose of today's video is to actually try and figure out together if you should build your PC right now or maybe go ahead and buy one that's running the AM5 platform versus the AM4 of last generation. There are a couple of reasons why you should go with AM5 but there's also a couple of reasons why you should stick with AM4 and one of the high selling points of the AM4 right now is of course the price to performance ratio that they offer with the last generation. Just as a side reference for you guys, this is my main computer right here. I built this in 2019 during the pandemic with all the latest and greatest that I had available to me. Uh, the CPU in there is a Ryzen 9 3900X, that is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. It is still a great CPU even today. Together on this X570 motherboard from Tomahawk and all of them are bundled up together with 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz from Corsair Vengeance. And on the other side of the scale, we have the Ryzen 5 7600X iGPU from Ryzen. This is a Zen 4 architecture CPU together with GPU capabilities that we are going to test out in a future video. So subscribe for that if you want. Just link down in the video description down below. And this CPU right here is going to go into this B650 Aorus motherboard or I should say gaming motherboard, whatever that might mean. And all of this is going to be bundled up together with 32 gigs of 6400 megahertz RAM, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, just as a short reference, the same amount of money I paid for that 32 gigs right there, which was running the 3200 megahertz with the old generation. And right now with the new generation for the same amount of money, a few years down the line, we're getting 6400 megahertz. That's double the performance. That is absolutely amazing. Just because I want to have the same even playing field on both of these machines, I'm going to be using my M.2 drive in both of them. So we're basically going to be running the same Windows installation with the same game installation and the same uh, setup for testing installation on both of these systems so we don't have any discrepancies during the tests. On paper, this new generation hardware right here should be much better or at least twice as good as the old generation right there. Even though we're running a uh, lower tier spec CPU compared to the one that I used on my previous system. But anyway, I'm really dying to see how this performance translates into the real world. So we're going to throw some games at the end and see exactly if those games can procure more FPS with the new system compared to the old system. As a GPU, in both of the systems, we're going to be running the same RTX 3090 so that we don't have any discrepancies on there and the power supply would be a 750 watts power supply from Seasonic which is going to be the exact same power supply in both of the systems. This being said, let's carry on building new PC and see exactly what performance we can get out of it. Please allow me this 20 seconds of complaint. Uh, Ryzen, what are you doing? We are buying your products and you're not gonna give us a cooling solution anymore. This is not a very cheap CPU that you can just give out to us and uh, well, just out of pity, you're not gonna throw in there a cooling solution for it. We are actually paying a lot of money for your products and you don't even give us a cooling solution anymore. I mean, take a look at this. Take a look at last year's box, what it says right here. It says this box includes the AMD Ryzen processor installation instructions, three years limited warranty, and premium cooler designed for use in a desktop PC. So you used to get in a box a CPU cooler, which was the Wraith Prism cooler actually, which is actually a pretty nice cooler if you ask me. And this is the cooler that I'm going to be using in today's build because those brackets on that AM5 fit perfectly with last year's, or I should say last generation cooler. So AMD, what's happening? Shame on you, AMD, shame, Jesus. My rant is over, but back to building this guy. Ha, this mounting solution actually seems more like an Intel mounting solution than AMD, if anything. But uh, hey, whatever, right? No more pins on, uh, well, today's architecture of CPU. So the pins are actually on the motherboard side. So that's why the mounting solution for the CPU resembles more an Intel product than an AMD. You still have the little uh, golden triangle here that should line up with the golden triangle on the motherboard side as well right there. And let's put it on there. 
like so, close the lid, like so, and then of course close the latch. Next on the install list is of course this CPU cooler right here, the last generation AMD RAID Prism cooler, which actually fits quite well just because of these brackets on each side as you can see, which line up perfectly with these black brackets right here on either side. All right, let's paste this guy up and put this new cooler into its place. For the synthetic benchmarks, we are going to be using the Cinebench R23 and see exactly what CPU scores we can get for both single core and uh, multi core performance on both of these CPUs right here. Another synthetic benchmark that I want to use is actually take this 980 Pro that I have from Samsung, which is a Gen 4 NVMe drive, and use it in the uh, Gen 5 slot right there on the B650 motherboard and try and see if we can get any sort of performance increase out of the whole situation, but I don't really think so. All of this, of course, in comparison with the X570, which is running a Gen 4 PCIe enabled slot for that NVMe drive. So without too much rambling, guys, I know the whole idea of today's video is not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but it's not really meant to be. The idea is to see what better price to performance ratio you can get with what sort of platform you choose to go with. So here we have the Cinebench R23 single core performance of both the Ryzen 5 7600X and both the Ryzen 9 3900X. And of course, in the single core performance, I'm not really that impressed, but we were expecting that uh, it will actually beat the Ryzen 9 3900X. That's because overall it's a faster CPU with faster clocks. And of course, on a single core scale, it should be able to beat the Ryzen 9 3900X without any sort of problem. On the multi-core performance, of course, things are a bit different and I was actually expecting this result uh, as well. Of course, the Ryzen 9 3900X is going to beat the Ryzen 5 7600X. That's because it's a CPU that's running twice the logical cores than the Ryzen 5 7600X. So even though you have that much more performance, or I should say that much more efficiency on the newer AM5 platform compared to the, uh, compared to the AM4, you are not going to beat it in the multi-core performance score because you have that much more available cores to you. So moving on next we have the Crystal Disk Mark which ran the Samsung 980 Pro NVMe drive which is a PCA Gen 4 drive and we actually ran it close to its maximum uh, performance given by the manufacturer. It doesn't really matter that there are very slight or minute differences in between the AM4 and AM5. Those are to be expected. I think it's uh, quite in the tolerance range there. But the manufacturer says that the write speed of this drive should be around 5000 megabytes and the read speed should be at around 7000 megabytes. So that's what we're getting or close to anyway with the AM4 and both with the AM5 because this is not a drive that is enabled for PCIe Gen 5. So this is the Ryzen 9 3900X running on the AM4 platform and as you can see running Hogwarts Legacy right now we are sitting at 1440p all maxed out with uh, Nvidia DLSS set on quality and everything seems to be running pretty smooth. We are about uh, what 50 to 60 FPS at times even a bit better depending on the uh, well the parts of the world that we are flying through. But anyway what I have really noticed on my system compared to the AM5 platform that running the same game with the same settings at the same resolution I'm actually running into a CPU bottleneck as you can see right here. I mean the GPU's utilization as you can see is hovering anywhere in between uh, 50 to 60, 65 at times and I cannot seem to get this GPU to run uh, well any better at this resolution with this CPU. Uh, bear in mind that when running the AM5 platform I was able to run this GPU for its full potential of 100% and reaching around 420 watts at times which is the rated maximum TDP. So that seems to me to be a CPU bottleneck on the AM4 platform with the Ryzen 9 3900X. Uh, everything is uh, updated. Uh, we're running Windows 11 here with all the updates as well uh, done. And I cannot seem to find a problem uh, or what is running, uh, what is happening around with my CPU. But as you can see, the utilization on the CPU itself is not very, very high. It's sitting at around 30% right now with some 80 watts of power. And power is definitely not a problem with this PSU because the PSU is rated for 750 watts. And as you can see, we're not hitting not nearly enough wattage uh, drawn on the PSU side. So this being said, let's move forward now and see what Forza Horizon 5 is doing. Definitely, we're not having any GPU bottlenecks with the AM4 running this uh, well game on this platform right here. And as you can see, the FPS counter says we're running anywhere in between 115 to 135, which was the actual best uh, 
uh, run that I had with this game on this system. Everything's running pretty smoothly. Once again, 1440p is the name of the game here with everything set on high and ultra. And uh, well, the game runs pretty smooth and I have absolutely no complaints. Even running my older AM4 machine, everything seems to be quite in order and I don't see any lack in power or graphical potential with any sort of games. So right now we're moving into Hogwarts Legacy running on the AM5 platform and straight out of the gate you can see we're reaching 100 FPS even more at times because we are actually not bottlenecked anymore by the CPU as you can see the utilization is 100% on the GPU side reaching the aforementioned 420 watts which is the maximum rated TDP for the 3090 and even though the CPU is still standing at around what 30 to 40% utilization definitely this CPU on this AM5 motherboard uh, is not a bottleneck for this game right here. Everything's running smoothly and of course the RAM helps out a lot because we're running 6400 megahertz RAM in comparison to the 3200 megahertz RAM that we were running just before on the AM4. Next up in line we have the Forza Horizon 5 and as you can see this game runs uh, well even smoother than the AM4 platform. Once again that CPU bundled up together with the uh, 6400 megahertz RAM helps things a lot uh, in comparison to the AM4 and we are reaching at times what 155 ish FPS here and there depending on the scenery of the game but yeah that's definitely an increase over the AM4 performance with around 20 to 30 FPS at times so this is what you can expect running the AM5 um, well motherboard and CPU with that higher frequency RAM so just as in Hogwarts Legacy, GPU bottleneck is not a problem here, but it was not a problem with the AM4 either, but this just definitely runs faster on the AM5 overall than with the AM4. So discussion time right now, I want to be frank about what's happening here. So if you want to build a PC right now in 2023, should you go with the AM4 that is cheaper or you should invest a bit more money and go with the future proofing option of going with the AM5. So first of all, your budget is very important when choosing to build a PC. And if you are cash strapped at the moment, you can definitely go with the AM4 stuff because A is going to be cheaper and B is still going to give you a great deal of performance for the money that you are going to spend. As I've been telling you, you are going to get around 85 to 90% with the AM4 versus the performance of the AM5, especially if you're going to choose to go with mid-tier stuff on the AM5 because the budget is a problem. Keep in mind that still going with the AM4, as long as you have a fast enough NVMe drive in there, a good enough CPU and maybe some good behaving or some fast uh, acting RAM in there, you are going to be golden because most of the performance that you are going to get out of games at least is going to come out of your GPU. So if you have more money to spend on a GPU, then definitely you are going to get more with your system overall than just uh, cheaping out on the GPU and going with more, uh, I should say, budget things on the AM5. Because if you're not going to be able to get that higher end GPU, then definitely you're not going to be able to obtain those higher FPS in games. I know that the components for today's video were not exactly the same, so it's not an apples to apples comparison that I've said before but neither could it be ever a discussion between comparing a Ryzen 9 on the AM4 with a Ryzen 9 on the AM5 because that's not a discussion. Of course, the AM5 platform, the newer CPU is going to win overall in all the games and all the benchmarks that we are going to throw at it. The idea is just to see which system should you go for. Guys, thank you very much for choosing to watch today's video. I know it's been a bit of a doozy, but hey, consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for more. See you guys in the next one. Stay awesome. Bye-bye.